Les, when you when you look at that first first half, would you say that you guys were adequately prepared for this game? On that first what? On the first half, would you say you guys were adequately prepared? Half, I think we were adequately prepared. Um, I, I think we uh, um, we came into the stadium with the with the right mindset. The issue being, you can't turn the ball over. If you, you turn the ball over like that, you're not going to win games. Um, and our guys understood that. We met uh, as a team right after the game, and uh, um, it's it's not something that one guy has to fix. It's something that the team has to take ownership of and work through. And I uh, I think there's some there's some sick people right now because it certainly was a game that uh, could have gone another way. But uh, I, I, I like I like the team that I coach because I think they're, they're I think they want to play and I think they want to be excellent. So uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, the poor first the. For the poor start with the first five possessions, three of them turning into points um, for the opponent, that, 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 that knocked us out. And uh, we had the opportunity to come back and work towards that, uh, that end, but did not, uh, did not have the good fortune um, with some of the uh, plays that were really big plays that went against us, so. Did uh, Coastal's defensive front went too often to, sorry, can you hear? Speak up a little bit. All right, I have this mask on. Uh, did Coastal's defensive front win too often for you guys to win this game, or did they just control the line of scrimmage? I, I think the, uh, I think the, the uh, young quarterback that, that took over for Coastal, who beat out the other two guys, showed quickness and ability to get, get some yards that maybe those other guys didn't get. And uh, um, yeah. Hey Les, were you given an uh, explanation on the onside kick of why there was a penalty there? The penalty was the which we still don't see. Um, um, if you take your foot and you put it in advance of the ball and then kick an onside kick, it's an issue. And that's, that's what they said happened. Except that we knew that and coached it specifically not to do it, and Liam didn't do it. So we, we sat there and watched that. That uh, it would be interesting before I before I put my foot completely in my mouth. Um, I'm going to go look at that again because I think that there's a uh, I think there's something to learn from that uh, watching that film. And and then uh, you guys were very aggressive going for it. Uh, two point conversions was that your decision making, Brent Deerman's decision making, and can you explain maybe those three decisions? Three decisions. Well, yeah, I could tell you, go for two um, was uh, was my um, responsibility, and that's uh, kind of things that we did. We have an analytics book that we uh, that I'll refer to in the next couple of weeks that uh, that really kind of gives you a, the feel. Percentages are taken into account, and your the uh, the opportunity to go for two was certainly the right call. And and then just following up on that, um, have you always used a, a chart like that, or is that new this year? Did you have it last year? No, I, I have a, a yeah. We we used a really a lesser chart. Um, it, that was really before I came here. We have been on this book for the last two years. 
How would you assess the way your quarterbacks played? Um, minus turnovers, the, uh, the, some of the big plays that they made, McVitie had a couple of really nice runs and, and big plays. And um, I think uh, Miles Kendrick, again, comes, comes in after McVitie leaves the game and then just peppers a couple balls. And, but then uh, the issue is, you know, they're turning the ball over. So um, we as a team, coaching staff first, will uh, do those things that are necessary to correct and fix. And uh, feel pretty good about it. Do you have a feel for uh, what direction you might go with that position? You think you'll continue to play multiple guys? Or? Well, we, uh, we 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 played three quarterbacks, and three quarterbacks really, in my opinion, are going to make some significant uh, significant future for us at that position, and uh, so. Jalen Daniels, he's keeping in there and kind of got his feet wet late. And I, uh, I think he's going to be a good player. So, but uh, like I said, it's not just the quarterbacks. It's the room. It's the coaches. We'll, we'll all work on it. We'll all stick our uh, head in the fire to, to make sure that this – the style of play does not become uh, ours. Do you have an update on McVitie's condition? I do not, and I, uh, I, I HIPAA um, as best I can. Do you know what happened to Puka? Playing football. Coach, do you have any update on that or same thing? <laughs> Don't get mad. Hey, uh, uh, Puka's got a got a nick, and uh, I I suspect that he'll be back uh, relatively quickly. Hey, Which was hey, the hey, hey, uh, running the ball? Uh, what were they doing that was making them so difficult to defend? I didn't hear. Start that one over. Had a couple people talking. Uh, hey, coach. Uh, so Coastal Carolina had a really good day running the ball. What were they doing specifically that was making them so tough? Um, they uh, they had a, they had a nice little option attack to go with their their option reads and uh, and uh, I, I think their I think the quarterback did a really good job in his first start I think um, and uh, they uh, I, I I was uh, I was impressed with some of the the offensive lineman that they played with. So, how would you evaluate your defense's performance overall? Yeah, I I, I think we're again when you talk about the room, you're sure we're talking about the defense, and uh, we're, we're going to look at that. I I can tell you this: um, we have some really good kids and good players in that uh, in that segment of our team. Um, and uh, Juan Prudney was a true freshman starter in that game and played really lights out. And uh, uh, we're excited about some of the things that are going on on that side of the ball. But uh, again, I'll uh, look at that film either um, early tomorrow morning or later tonight. So I'll know what I'm doing later tonight. Less does. Does an outcome Mark, like this do anything to um, kind of slow down the, the rebuild you're trying to do here? Slow down the... The rebuild you're trying to do here? Um, I don't think so. I think, I think it hastens the, the uh, correction. I think when you have a game like this, first of all, I never want to fix a game, fix a team... That, that has lost games. I would much rather fix teams that has won games. But I think we have a team that's committed to doing things for the upperclassmen 
that are significant. And I, uh, you know, I like the commitment that the team has together and uh, they, they all, they'll, they'll make a difference. And that's what we have to do. You were, you were, and I think 12, I don't know exactly how many freshmen played in that game. But I can tell you this, it was a significant number. So, and that's, that's, a, uh, that's, that's a great opportunity of the future. Last question, please. Hey, why weren't you all able to get any pressure in the backfield defensively today? Can you tell us a little bit about just, there weren't a lot of TFLs or sacks for your defense. Yeah, they ran the football so much. It was the, the odds were not as good. Yeah, we, uh, we hit eight gaps on them uh, several times down in there in, in what was, you know, end zone, that area of the field, the red zone. And uh, we would strike them and, and, that, and that quarterback could, would extend the play, pitch it, and, and suddenly go on the edge and he'd gotten hit in the A gap. So, um, yeah, I, I think, I think, he, I think his abilities were, you know, some wonderful things for that football team. All right.